So, as I said, I've got two short presentations. So my second one is about pensions policies. So, you probably hear Cheryl, you've heard Cheryl and Debbie talk this morning about all the things that we ask you to do. And we ask you to do lots of things, and the majority of the things we ask you to do are written out in our pension administration strategy. And when I was thinking about doing what presentation to do to you today, I thought we know what our policies are, we harp on about them probably all the time, or when we email you and say, your contributions haven't come in this month, if they're late, it's written in the pension administration strategy, don't you know? Um, I hope no one put that, but <laughs> what I thought is I'd spend 10 minutes just talking to you what policies we have, but if you're not aware, I'd like you to go and have a look at them so you understand exactly what we say that we're going to do, what we expect of you, and then also it's a good time for us at the moment to be reviewing our policies, so as we change things over the next couple of months, we'll be engaging with you, asking for what to put some of our policies out to consultation, so you can make comments on, on them. So um, we have policies in place because they are a regulatory requirement underneath the regulations. Um, not only, obviously, um, do we have pension administration uh, policies, the, we have lots of investment policies as well. They're all available on our website. So if you ever feel like having a look, if you've really got any, nothing else better to do, please feel free um, to go on and have a look. Not only, obviously, are our policies um, a statutory requirement, but they, are, they set our approach for, some, for securing compliance, sorry, with the regulations. So they're our guide, they're our basis. We, the regulations say we have to have them, but then our policies set out how we achieve um, all the things that the regulations say we need to do. So I just wanted to ask you a rhetorical question, are you aware of them and do you use them? Hopefully you, you may be aware of the pension administration strategy, at least. So these are our um, administration policies, there's six of them, and it's really within my area to make sure that they're all updated. So the biggest one, as, as I've um, said, is the administration strategy. So here are our fund administration policies. Um, the past, the, so the pension administration strategy um, document is really the most important one for you, for you guys as employers. Um, we've got a comms policy statement, which is obviously quite important. It sets out the fact that we have these very meetings, um, how we communicate with our members, um, and how we communicate with other stakeholders. We've got a breaches policy, so what would happen if we had a breach in the scheme regulations, um, termination funding policy, and training policy. So I'm going to touch on a couple of these. What we, um, I'll touch on them in a moment. What we've decided to do is look at all, all of our policies um, and have a review. It's important that obviously we continue to look back at our, our look back at on our work and asking ourselves, are we doing um, any? Do we require any improvement, or are there any areas that need updating? You've heard Debbie talk about this morning the fact that we've done a very large data review recently. The fact that we have now got in um, the pensions board; they're constantly reviewing our performance and, and whether the fact that we're compliant with regulations. Um, and the Pension Regulator Code of Practice 14 is there to guide us along the way to make sure that we um, are compliant with the regs. Not only that, is um, the Pension Regulator have had, have had um, oversight of our uh, scheme um, in the past couple of years. And what they have been doing recently is doing a survey every year. So they've been writing out all public uh, sector schemes and asking them, how are you getting on? How are things looking? How are you compliant with, um, with the public <coughs> So we did respond to that survey, and the results were released in May by the Pensions Regulator. And what they did from their results, they identified these four main risk areas across all public sector schemes. So this isn't just us in Shropshire or in the RGPS, this is all public sector schemes. This is fire, civil service, NHS, etc. And the Pensions Regulator identified the top risks of governance, so making sure that all uh, pension boards have been set up within um, each of the schemes, the fact that they're trained, and the fact that um, the, the pension board know whether the um, fund's breaches log is, or the fact that the fund has a breaches log. They also identified um, internal controls as a, um, as a risk across all public service schemes. So the TPR expect key processes to be put in place. So that's one of the key reasons why we're having to look at our policies, because as you heard Charles say, we're now using iConnect more than ever, and that's been a process change in the past couple of years, so we need to make sure all of our policies um, are online now with our new processes. 
Um, one of the other risk areas they talked about was record keeping. So the fact that, again, I can't keep on uh, mention it enough, the fact that we've been making sure that we need um, all the data that we have um, is reviewed. And one of the areas also, the final area, was member communications. So they are very hot, the pensions regulators are very hot in ensuring that all funds issue their annual benefit statement by the 31st of August. So thankfully we have been complying with that over the past couple of years since that new day has been introduced and that's because largely because you've been able to get that data to us accurately on time. So with all these risks that the, um, the pension regulator have identified, what it's done is driven our work plan really. Um, you've heard Debbie talking about all the things that we've been doing and, um, we've, um, and all the things that we've got coming up. So what we're I'm going to do is introduce our four main admin policies so then you understand exactly what are in the policies and then when over the next couple of months or over the next year or so when we are telling you that our policies may be changing if we want to speak to us about them hopefully you'll have a good understanding exactly what exactly it is in there. <coughs> so first one is our administration strategy statement. So ultimately um, the regulation set out that we can prepare a written statement of um, how of the expectations of how the fund meets its uh, statutory requirements. But not only is it there written in the regulations that we can have one, it provides a, a good working relationship between ourselves and you, and it enforces the administration duties that you expect of us and also the responsibilities that we expect of you as well. Um, ultimately, it helps us meet our um, aims, the fund's aim to provide a high quality, seamless, informative and timely customer focused administration service. And to cut it short, to, to make sure that we pay benefits accurately and then on time. So hopefully you're all aware of pension administration strategy and um, we do provide a copy to all of our new employees within the fund um, and hopefully some employees have been in the scheme or members of staff um, working for employees that you are, you take the time to, have a, to, to dip back into it if you haven't had a look at it for a while. second policy we have is a communications policy and what it, um, regulation 61 sets out that the fund must have a communications policy so it sets out all our communications with our members um, so people who sit on, on, on our pensions committee um, you guys as the scheme employers and also our members so we're reviewing this again now because um, we are moving to more um, electronic methods of communicating so we use MSS um, a lot more than we have done and we are using email and as Debbie said what we want to do in the future is go more towards an e-communication so members can go on and download their own quotations and things like that. So it's a really nice time to actually to review our comms policy um, and it sets a format frequency and a method of providing information and I think what you can do is draw on that policy so we are happy to come out and see your members of staff um, and I'm quite happy to sit and do a presentation and, and tell your members of staff all about the pension scheme so they recognise the benefits of being in the scheme and um, the fact that they are a member and then you, you of course, as an employer um, are part of it. So that's all in our comms policy as well as how we communicate with, um, your, with your employees. So just some of the communication um, items that we offer, so there's newsletters. Hopefully, the fact that you're all here means that you read my spam, which is great. Um, but what we want to do is the fact that we obviously film this meeting. But what we want to do, as Cheryl has mentioned, um, offer more smaller workshops, more training. We're aware that your jobs are getting busier and busier, and pensions is probably getting bigger and bigger. So if there's anything that we can do, training um, or any type of webinars, that's where we want to go really to make sure that you get the most out of your time. Also, understand and have the knowledge that you need um, to, to perform your duties. So, uh, third, uh, pro uh, third policy is our reporting breaches. So, this applies to you as employers. Anyone um, can report the pension fund for a breach. I'm thankful to say, and um, lucky to say, that we haven't had any breaches reported against us, and we haven't reported ourselves either. So, we, there are some funds in, in the country that have had to report themselves to the pensions regulator because they haven't, for instance, been able to get their annual benefit statements out on time. Luckily, um, that didn't apply to us. So our reporting breaches policy is there and it shows the procedure um, and who is responsible for reporting um, a, a breach. And I've, um, as we said, uh, we've got Liz um, here as part of the pensions board. Um, they are there, that's their role to ensure that we are compliant with the regulations and that we're not breaching. 
So if a breach was to be recorded, what the pension regulator expects is that the breach is identified and then um, that it's um, assessed whether it's materially significant. So is it just one person, one member that they haven't received some information or um, has it affected everyone? And um, so that's what material significance means and that's all outlined in our policy as well. So as employers, as you have, um, um, you know, you mentioned in it, it's worth knowing that that information is there. On the, on, on the flip side, what we do when anything does go wrong, when you don't give us the information that you're meant to give us, um, or you don't give us the contributions you're meant to give us on time, we do have to, we, we don't report you, we haven't reported it anyone just yet, thankfully, but we do record, we record all of our breaches that we understand um, to be breaches. So if there's any significant patterns building up with any of our employers, we can nip them in the bud very, quick, very quickly. So it may not seem like a big issue if you're paying us two days late, but if all of our employees were paying us two days late and that money wasn't going into the fund until two days later, that would have investment um, implications. So we do, um, we are quite hot on, on contacting you when, when you've done something wrong or um, paid something late, um, simply because we, what we are trying to do is nip problems in the bud and this is also in line with our breaches policy. And lastly, our final statement <laughs> is our governance compliance statement. So part, a large part of our governance compliance statement sets out how obviously how the fund is governed so the fact that we've got a pensions board the fact that we've got a pensions committee and all the decision making powers that they have but um, at the back of that document is um, i mean I, I know it's probably quite a few of you in the room have known me because i've talked to you about your discretions policy so as an employer in the lgps you will need to have an individual discretions policy which sets out your um, decision making process uh, with regards to the discretions you have and the regulations and um, the fund has a discussions policy as well. So if um, we have some decisions to make if someone dies, for instance, um, we have a decision to make if who to pay that death grant to. And our policy, so our set policy, is in that discussions policy um, document. We've got lots of other um, fund policies. So if you ever want to check out what exactly what our decision making powers are and who they're actually made by, you can have a look at that in our governance compliance statement. Um, finally, we've got a new policy, well, an, an updated version of our current uh, terminations policy. It's currently being drafted and we're working with our scheme actuary on, um, on, per, on putting this together. And it's going to be called an employer events policy. So it's replacing what we've currently got as a term, it's called a terminations policy. <coughs> um, what it will do is cover the various life stages of an employer. Because we've got more employers in the funds now and more employers coming and going, so employers that are, are um, applying for admitted body status, um, maybe they're taking on a contract for a short period of time and then they're coming out. And um, what we're trying to do is tighten up and have a more of a com comprehensive policy on, on how, um, how that actually works with regards to funding of the scheme, what is then paid upon, um, upon exit of that employer in the scheme. So that's one part of it. Um, but also, um, we've got now a lot more academies, so we've got our policy is going to be in there with regards to new academy training and um, the fund and how it works with regards to employee contribution rates and um, their setup if they're joining a mat and things like that. There are there is one significant change, one, one um, change on how the payments are calculated. So what we'll be doing with um, that affects four employers in the fund. So we'll be liaising with those employers um, when the policy is a bit more further on from a draft stage. But again, this policy will be coming out to all of you guys for consultation and for any comment. So watch this space when you get that email from me. So that's me done. I hope that's been interesting and a little insight into all the kind of policies that we have in, in the fund. You may not obviously go into them one, you might only go into them once or twice, but I wanted to make sure that you were aware of them that they're there and the fact that you can draw upon them. Okay, can I take any questions?